Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from LightsailVR.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to create a stereo 3D camera rig and render it out of Unreal. I only know of one plugin that sort of works with stereo 3D, and it's confusing, it crashes, it uses things like render textures, and it just doesn't quite work as well as I hoped. So I did a bunch of research and came up with my own way. If you know a better way, please let me know in the comments, but let's just jump in and I'll show you how to do it. And I'll explain things as I go along instead of telling you up front. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click, go to blueprint class, and then search for cine camera and just make a cine camera actor. Select this. We're going to call this BP underscore. We'll call it stereo cam parent and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to make another one same thing sending camera sending camera actor select call this BP stereo cam we'll say master so let's go ahead and drag in the parent and let's set this to 000, zero, zero. And then we're going to drag in the master. We're going to set this to 000. And this master we're going to call master underscore L for left eye. Drag in another one. We're going to call this master underscore R for right. And then I'm going to make sure to put this 000. These are both at 0, 0, 0, 4. So for the left eye, we're going to go to the Y, and we're going to set it to minus 3.15. For the right eye, we're going to go to 3.5. No, excuse me, 3.15. Basically, what we're doing is we're offsetting the cameras by 63 millimeters. Unreal is in centimeters, so 63 centimeters is six point or 63 millimeters is 6.3 centimeters so we're just offsetting it to the left and to the right now we're going to select both of these and then drag them underneath the parent so you have the parent and then you have the left and the right so now if I want to move this camera rig I select the parent I can drag it around I can also pilot it so go into here always pilot the parent, not the left or the right. So I can pilot this to wherever I want it. And now if I click on camera left, you can see my left camera and my right camera. It's probably hard to see in the screen recording, but if you look at this little ear right here, you can see that we see a little bit more of it in our right eye than we do our left. Um, so that looks correct. You can see we have three cameras on top of each other. And what you don't want to do is accidentally select and move one of these. So if I was in the viewport and I selected one, it's grabbed the left eye. And now if I move this by accident, you can see now our offset is not right. So I can control Z to get out of that. So what I want to do here is I want to go to the master blueprint, open this up, and I'm going to search for uh, mesh. And so this camera mesh right here, you can just click this and press clear, compile and save. And now we just have the one camera. So now we can only accidentally select the parent camera. Why did we create a blueprint called master? Why, did we, why didn't we just bring in a cine camera actor from here and then just do two of those and bring them in? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> The main reason we set these cameras up as one blueprint is both the left camera and the right camera are the same, come from the same blueprint. So let's say we wanted to change the focal length. Instead of changing it in the details panel, so if you come down here and we have the left eye selected, for instance, if I change anything here, so if I go to, let's just change this to a 30 millimeter. Now our left eye is a different focal length than our right eye, and that is not good. So let me go back here, undo that. So basically you don't want to change anything in the outliner for the lens settings for these left and right eyes. You can for the parent. The 
parent is basically just for reference. It doesn't really matter what this is, but for the left and right eyes, this you want to change any settings in the actual blueprint. So you can click here to open up the blueprint. And now if we want to, let's say we want to change the, the lens to a 50 millimeter. So let me do this so you can see what we're looking at here. So now if I select this left eye, I'll go ahead and pin it. So you can see what the lens looks like here. If we're in our, so in our blueprint here, if we select, let's say we change this to an 85, you can see that it updated <coughs> our, our lens settings. And of course it updated for both eyes. So that's, that's good. That's what we want. So that goes, that's true for everything. If you want to, for instance, change your focus to be on this monkey, let's do tracking and we'll set this to the monkey. Basically these settings should always, always, always match. Some things though, you won't want to change from the left and right eyes in the blueprint, you'll actually want the parent to, to change. So for instance, anything that deals with transform or rotation, you always want to change the parent, not the left and right eyes. For instance, if I wanted to track this monkey, for instance, with my stereo rig, I would not want to do that from the cameras because they would crisscross, potentially. I would want to do that from the actual parent in the details panel or in sequencer, etc. So let's go ahead and look at sequencer now. So let me go ahead and add a level sequence. I'm going to call this shot underscore tutorial. And I'm going to put this in my stereo tutorial. That's fine. So now to render these eyes out left and right, what we're going to do is, let's say we want to add some animation too, because I'll make this a little bit more uh, difficult for the tutorial sake. So let's go ahead and drag in our parent into sequencer. So for the parent, we want to adjust our transform. So if we go ahead and we are right now we are um, piloting the parent. So I'm going to go ahead and add a transform keyframe here. And then let's say back here at frame 148, I want to be here. Go ahead and add another transform key. So let's just double check that. Looks good. So our parent is making this movement, but we want to render our left and right eyes, right? So let me go ahead and drag in my left camera. Okay. At the top here, it may be hard to see it, but at the top here, you can see it's the camera cuts track shows that the parent, this is all the parent. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of the timeline here. And under camera cuts, I'm going to go camera, binding, and go to left. So now I can see that this is the left camera that's being rendered out. And that looks correct. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my content browser. I'm going to save this. I'm actually going to rename this to be underscore L for left, and then I'm going to right click, duplicate, I'm going to set this to right. Let me right click on this. We can take out the camera master L and bring in the master R down here. Same thing for my camera cuts. Choose the right camera. And now that looks correct. Go ahead and save. And now to render, you can just go up to Movie Render Queue. And I'm going to go ahead and delete these. Render, called this Shot Tutorial L and Shot Tutorial R. You can put any presets you have. For right now, for this test, this is fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and press render local. And we have this beautiful, amazing animation here. So now we have our left and our right eyes rendered out separately. Now you can combine this in whatever program you want to combine them in. For me, I'm going to combine them in Simulate Scratch or Live Effects because I don't actually have to transcode anything. I can actually play back the left eye and the right eye at the same time 
from the JPEG sequence, top over bottom, and review it without having to transcode it to make it over under or side by side, any of that stuff. So anyway, hopefully this tutorial was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.